Hello. Sorry to leave you all in chat quiet a little bit longer than usual, but I thought that since there were so many fun new emotes, that you would have some to do. Adjust my levels just slightly. There we go. And find my camera. Settings. There we are. My focus. Let's get everything in there. So as you may have noted, ah, oh, Necro Buffalo, Necro Buffalo got the uh, got the boba tea sheep guana. I have not yet put a, a tier three emote in place. I was originally just going to have the text word quail, but that seemed redundant. So I have not thought of, of what silly thing to add, but I'll get there. And in the meantime, everyone should have pretty easy access to all of the emotes, even if you aren't subscribed. It should be pretty cheap with the channel points you've already built up to unlock all of the tier one ones, which includes the unicorn, the pride potu, the potu, the quail, and the sheep guana. Oh, we gotta vote for, for text for for text quail emote. Alright, well, I'll do that then. I'll slip in a uh, a text a text version of quail. So today the internet has voted and we are going to work on our little our little tiny model quailadin. I've got I've got the reference image open. I'm gonna slide my window around here a little bit, actually. I'm gonna chat you have to go over there now. I'm gonna arrange things so I can see my screen. There we go. So this does not need to be like a long-term advertisement for Super Sculpey. <laughs> Just slide that box out of the way. Although I think I do need to grab some more clay. Get some more clay ready to go. How has everyone's week been? I'm gonna pull my focus to the table there. There we go. Oh, it'll be fun to qu to emote quail word quail emote quail says Sario five two eight yeah that's uh fair and people still do shout quail in all caps so um and as Auntie Shepherd has just pointed out um there are in fact now cheer badges like that unicorn with the stabby horn that she has now next to her name there's also a quail one that i snuck in at the at uh the one bit the one i think one bit cheer is a quail i forget what order i put them in now which is silly because i did it um but i'm pretty sure it's 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 I know it's 100 bits for the unicorn. I think it's one bits for a for a quail. So you can have have name badge things as well. Okay, that's enough clay work. Now, let's get some, some sort of detail positions drawn on here. We've got 
that. Gorge it and some shoulder, arm pauldrons. I don't remember what 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 shoulder pads are <laughs> metal shoulder pads are called. And then armor goes to down here. Move that over there. Paul, oh, I was right. Good pauldrons. <laughs> Hooray! I used the correct word. Well, this kind of lifts out, but we we still need to kind of see where it goes. And did we figure out how the back worked when I drew it? No. Why would we why would we do that? It's not in the view. The inevitable trick of sculpture. Suddenly it's 3D. And there's the line. What do your little eyes look like and where are they positioned? This is actually much larger. Okay. Up like that. Eye is kind of there. Too far back, too far back. Ah. Are we pointing at things and labeling things with uh, chat has found that the emote that the emote pointing finger that can be used to do like a thinking emote um, points to the wing of the quail and the green in the flag of the of the pride sheep guana. Just... So what we need is a bit more clay, sort of, oh, I should, I should make the other side match. I should remember that everything is 3D. And I should make it match. There we go. Adding a bit of clay. So I'm glad everyone is having fun with all of the emotes. We made the new ones on Monday and then I went and made the, the, the cheer badges. So that people could have those next to their names. And uh, y'all put in the work, so I hope that you get to enjoy the benefits. Hello, Unicorn Duke. Welcome to the new emoteful version of Friday Tea Time. where I am 
dressing up quail. Um, there's no music bot today because it does not work anymore. It's doing one of its doesn't open anymore periods, and I just did, I didn't have the uh, time slash spoons to fix it today. So, alas, there is no there's no background music. Although I could find some sort of license-free channel. I'm just very sort of picky about the music. And I really like the ambient channel on the pretzel one. <laughs> po two staring at why do I find the Po two staring at me comforting? asks Saria. Because because the Po two is is an amazing creature. The truth is, the Potu isn't judging you. It loves you just the way you are. Yeah, it loves you just the way you are. It stares, it stares into your soul, and it knows the real you, and 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 it accepts you. That's how great Potu is. If you were watching my Twitter this week, you know that I got an amazing potu in the mail. And that was pretty great. Pot a potuing, if you will. <laughs> Our craft, it is excellent and I love it. It made my week. Now I have to find a way to escalate. I have some ideas. But obviously I'm not going to talk about them. Because it's not funny if it's not a surprise photoing. Ah, uh, Sario 528. Yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's quite a lot going on. Mental health and Twitter are not necessarily always friends. Um, but I, uh, I posted a series of images about unboxing, unboxing the package I got. And, uh, and it was a good package. In fairness, I try pretty hard to be like wholesome and cheerful on Twitter for the most part. Because um, I feel like that's... Uh, I don't want to say my brand exactly. But the thing that I'm better at, my role... better at emotional support. With quail and chocolate and such. 
I do. I tweet about once every two days, <laughs> Auntie Shepherd. That's about all of the words I have to say. Or possibly about as often as I feel help, happy and supportive. You don't know. I tweeted, yeah, I tweeted, I tweeted six Potu tweets yesterday. Arcraft says, I figured this will eventually end with one of us getting in trouble for trying to mail a live Potu. I mean, that that's quite the escalation. I'm not sure how to get a hold of a live Potu. And also, I have a great deal of respect for living things and would never put them through the mail. It'd have to be a bespoke delivery. A handler would have to show up at your house. Like, I hear you ordered a potu. Auntie Shepherd says, you should tweet pics of Jack, my cat. Um, the thing about my cat is that he spends almost all of his time in the same position. So he gets repetitive very quickly. Not that I don't have that many pictures of him in my phone sleeping in his cat bed. Just that that's, um, there's not a lot of variation in my cat's life. Get to know nature suggests Potu singing telegram, which I think is, is sort of perfect, especially because that one time we opened like the Potu song and it's, it's a little horrible. Actually, the bird song of the Po too is a little bit, a little bit awful. That's kind of a little beginning of a helmet there. This bit's angled a little bit more in the drawing. I'll just and then let's see. I don't want to add too much. Here, I just want to give it a little bit of depth at the top so that I can lift it away without pressing in. Twitter feed of Jack at 2 p.m. showing this exact same position every single day would be a successful Twitter feed. That is fair figments made. That's, that's probably true. That is probably true. I also type and then delete a lot of tweets. So there's that. That counts, I feel, as, as Twitter engagement, whether you believe me or not. What happens is you get all of the stuff that I am sort of like not filtering when I say out loud during a stream, so I don't I don't have the time to consider if I'm being clever or not. But when it's on Twitter, I have plenty of time to look at the wording and be like, is that as funny as I think it is? Is this something other people need to know? And the answer is often no. The answer I make myself anyway. I say the answer is often no. I'm the one answering myself. Am I correct? Who knows? Auntie Shepherd says, I don't think just tweet. I, I, I am the sort of introvert that overthinks all of the things. That is my, my hope. I feel like I'm holding him a little bit closer to the camera. Let's, let's focus shift. There we go. Um, I, I think about everything all of the time. Sometimes 
I'm even thinking about what to say when there's a weird long pause in the stream. But just then I wasn't, just then I was thinking about where the line of the uh, armor goes. Hi. Twitter, Twitter to me has a little bit of the same, the same feeling as, um, as like small talk at a party. In that it's a thing I don't fully understand. <laughs> and I don't think I'm great at. But that's sort of social media in general. Also, I will I will definitely start a project and work on it all day and forget what time it is. I can definitely just make art for multiple days in a row um, and not really go on the internet. I sort of take weekends off from Twitter, kinda, in as much as I ever post on Twitter. Ah, uh, Chet is all commiserating with me about small talk at parties. Yes, parties. Small talk at parties is the worst. Ooh, Auntie Shepherd says it's thundering and the crows are cawing and it's all very atmospheric. I like it. A good, a good gothic novel for you. Oh no, now I have to make the sides match. 3D. I feel like when you do one side, you're like, that looks pretty good. And then you're like, oh no. There's definitely another side. It needs to look exactly like this one. Our craft says, by the way, weren't the two of you going to stream some game? Did I miss that somehow? No, our craft, you have not missed it. We have not yet done it. We have not yet um, suffered through Walden together. Uh, Auntie Shepherd suggests casting resin. I, I am not a casting resin fan, honestly. I say that I used to do it, um, but a lot of the tricks to it require a vacuum chamber, which I do not have, which means it can be really hard to get a clean cast without air bubbles. Also, it can be a little toxic. There are probably companies that will do molds and casts of a thing for me. For money. I've used people like that before, but at least the one person that I've used for art before, um, who was amazing at it, uh, has retired to make his own great art, so who am I to stop him? With the row, okay. Ah, uh, yes, we're um, ceramic casting uh, for something this small and detailed. Eh, 
I don't think it'll hold the detail. It would be porcelain, I think, is what I would use, and then it would be crazy fragile. And no, we never we never played the Thoreau game. Um, but one day we will. So you did not miss it, Arcraft. All right, let me hang on. Let me parse this username. I've got ancient evil. Ancient evil Robert Thedel? Rhyming? Maybe. Um, welcome, ancient evil Robert Thedel. The rallying cry is quail. Rallying cry and general greeting. The alert of our people. Working on a little a little quail paladin figurine. Also, ancient evil is what I'm going to call you now. Your username is great and amazing. Um, I apologize that I had to stumble over it. Very long names with no spaces between words make my brain sad. I have difficulty parsing where the word breaks are, and I will try and 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 just generate random words with that collection of letters and it's not it's not ideal Ooh, a montage it is a montage of my discord days anyway i feel like i got there at the end um i feel like i managed it it just takes takes a second of parsing Auntie Shepherd is looking forward to uh, how angry I'm going to get carving the wheat crust that I designed for this, which is fair. <laughs> I'll be sitting here like, why couldn't it have been? Why couldn't it have just been flowers? Big, simple flowers. Or leaves, just regular old, boring leaves. But no, I had to have lore. What was I thinking? I mean, I think I was thinking lore is fun. And to be fair, that's still true. Yep, gotta be weak. Okay, how did I, mm, I see. <laughs> I keep looking at the thing that I drew and being like, what did I, what, what did I do? It goes kind of net net. Kind of there. Yes, kind of there. Just need to. Yeah, there we go. Need to add a little bit of clay. Lift it up just a little bit. Ooh, quail paladin riding war oxen. <laughs> Fun fact. The the quail paladin rides sheep guana. Bet you didn't know you were stumbling into an art channel with deep lore, huh? It's true. I haven't yet been convinced that everything requires war oxen. Although I have drawn oxen a number of times, so I I refuse to I refuse to be told I've never given you any oxen.
Yes. Um, sheep guana just kind of, they kind of just entered bird D&D on a whim is what happened. You know. When, when all of the things you do sort of end up in the same story world somehow. I've consistently made this little bit of it worse. And I'm not sure, not sure how. Not sure how I keep messing this bit of the gorget up. It's true, Auntie Shepherd. I have not sculpted a war oxen. That is true. Um, I do. I do have kind of a fun idea for uh, another hilariously large ceramic thing, which is a um, an oxen bust. Sort of all arty, just the bust, kind of a hollow back where it kind of dissolves into like. This is my hand gestures describing it. Um, the the sort of torn off rougher clay as it kind of goes into as it disappears. Kind of kind of in the realm in, in the realm of the of the goose. Of the goose and gosling. Where the face gets sort of the most detail and that it becomes more abstract as, as it goes out. <laughs> um, so that might be another big thing that, that I do on stream. Um, if I can get my camera high enough. Uh, Soon, soon friends, I shall have a new laptop. Because this laptop, um, let's just say it has problems. I think I've complained about them enough on stream that it doesn't need repeating, but it has problems. Uh, and ideally, new laptop will be able to handle a bit, a bit more exciting resolution while streaming. So. So we'll see what we can manage. Auntie Shepherd calls dibs on the oxen. In fairness, I there was no world in which I did not expect that to happen. Let's see, other channel business. If you are wondering why I never started that large pottery project, it's because I still haven't gone and purchased clay. Uh, going places at the moment is quite the thing. And uh, there's always been something else to do. On the bright side, um, our little unicorn and, and rat and frog that we did previously has now, I've been told, finished its bisque firing. So I can go pick them up, ready for glazing. I still have to go by glaze, but, but we'll manage, we'll manage eventually. If you're wondering why I'm leaving the face sort of soft. It's because I know that I will crush that bill a number of times if I do it now. It will be the the point that sticks out and is the most fragile, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it until later. I will do it at a later time when I am less likely to 
just accidentally squish it trying to work on something else. Um, I'm not seeing any dropped frames. Figments made. He says they are having a slight freezing problem with the stream. But uh, let me look at the other stat things. Nope. Nope. I got no warnings. I got no issues. Stream believes stream is good. It is possible that stream is incorrect. That would not be outside the realms of possibility. But but previously, it's very large issues were um, were my encoding issues. And I fixed that by just turning all the settings down. Uh, new laptop. <clears throat> Let's get ourselves a pauldron. Oh goodness, Cloudflare, Cloudflare DNS went down. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes the internet just gives up. Auntie Shepherd, this clay stuff is a super sculpy medium. It is a polymer clay, which means it is made from, will you tell me your ingredients, sort of, no? Um, plastics. It's, it's made from plastics, is what I will say. Um, you bake it in an oven to set it. Mollusks and monsters. <laughs> Excellent username. Um, no worries. This does actually, I've, I've used, I've used epoxy clay before as well and it has um has a similar color but this is super sculpy medium which did not used to exist it used to be fleshy pink regular and gray hard and i know at least one other artist besides myself who would mix them together to get their own medium it's very exciting that medium exists. Because I always found the firm a little too firm. And the fleshy pink was um, horrifying. Hello, Hannah Cohn. Putting, uh, putting armor on the Quailadin. Also, don't worry, people who voted for armadillos. That will come up again. I like them. So all is not lost. It's not a one-time armadillo offer. you'll have another chance. Ah, Mollusks and Monsters. You might have been describing regular Sculpey. Super Sculpey is a different substance. Regular Sculpey comes in colors or is white and is absurdly brittle once you break it. Um, it's not good for sculpture at all. 
but super sculpy. Um, especially medium and firm. It's still fairly soft, like it's still, you know, I'm still being pretty light with my touch on it. And I, as I said, I haven't done the the face yet because I will just crush it in the process if I do it now. But uh, it's a much it's a much sturdier. Um, these are baked. It's a, a the our dancing rat if you remember from the other the other time. And this is the reverse impression, so I can make a stamped 3D version in ceramic. Um, and there, pretty, pretty sturdy. I wouldn't throw them across the room, but they're uh, certainly sturdy enough for sculpture, sturdy enough for sculpture to even, you know, paint and, and display as is. Not so fragile. Earl Grey tea. Oh no, Hannah. Your 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 unicorn didn't didn't show up properly. Um, but yes, future armadillos. Get to know nature it says, oh good, I'm definitely interested in that armadillo. Yes, that's, don't worry. Armadillo, armadillo is, is, is returning to the pole in the future. It could not, it could not quite manage stiff bird competition, but it came really close. It was a pretty pretty tight race. My unicorn has evaded me as is in character for her. Oh no, Hannah. Um, but yes, dancing dancing rat. Um, it's all finished. Patrons have already seen the finished dancing rat. Um, I think maybe not. Maybe I didn't show it to patrons. <laughs> It's been a week. Um, it's been a week, and, uh, and sometimes, sometimes I think I've shown stuff to patrons, but I've only shown it to Auntie Shepherd. <laughs> sometimes it's all a lie. It's like when you think you posted art online, but you just emailed it to a friend. And you're like, oh, why doesn't everyone know this exists? Of course I finished it. Oh, you've never seen it? How could that be? That's Auntie Shepherd says some of my Twitter followers did not follow instructions and vote for Quailden. And I have to say, I think some of them voted for Armadillo. I think that's the power of Armadillo. It's, uh, you know, it, Armadillo is such a good, it's such a good version. Hannah Cohen says the polymer has such a different quality from your normal, from your normal clay. I don't know if cuter, uh, it's cuter, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it's, um, it's got that kind of rubbery, like, like plastic toy look to it kind of and there's no grain because it's not a natural dirt based clay so it's 
so it's kind of shiny and soft looking. Look, you should all always vote. You should vote. You should put your heart. You don't have to follow instructions. You vote for what you want to watch. You vote for that armadillo. If you want an armadillo. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Oh dear. Hannah Combs says I voted for Quailden because Sarah tries so hard to make bird D and D a thing. I mean, I feel like I've made it a thing. I feel like I feel like I I I'm gonna keep going back to it. No one can stop me. I don't <laughs> No one's tried to shame me out of it. I personally think it's funnier when you try and hijack the polls and like almost half the people still vote for Armadillo. Just just me, though. The power of the Armadillo was amusing to me. We did a we did a mockingbird armadillo when that uh, silly silly meme was going around. The uh, the state bird state animal griffin thing that folks were doing. You know the one where we ended up with a quail bear that was uh, an abomination unto nature. See, armadillos are great. Now chat's, chat's getting into the armadillo, the armadillo mood. Ah, oh, there's a little, hmm. <laughs> yes. Kind of like that. Need to refine that shape a little bit. Yes, like that. <laughs> the baby quail bear. Yes. Mollusks and monsters. We have a macaroni penguin pirate named Alejandro. Just in case you were looking for a shorebird pirate. He, he is an excellent, an excellent pirate. And I would show him to you, but I can't screen share and use this camera at the same time. So alas, you'll have to take my word for it. But he is great. I feel confident. I feel confident other people will back me up. Oh, bar baby armadillo playing with toys. Is that the one where he, where he where he tucks it into his little into his little 
ball and rolls around with it. Is that that YouTube video? Yes, that is that video. Excellent. I can't watch the video while I'm doing this, you see. So, I need, I need you to explain what your links are too, so I can comment on them without ever seeing them. Although, in fairness, I have seen that YouTube video. Already. Feeling sort of like a quiet sculpting day. I don't know why I keep kind of just drifting off. It's like, oh well. Just. Just some quiet sculpting. If it gets too quiet, I will host a snail race. The improved, a new improved snail race. Ah, mollusks and monsters. Seeds are channel points. And if you click on the sort of dot of them, you can use them to unlock the little emotes that everyone is using. So if you click on them, there's one that says unlock a random emote and one that says choose an emote to unlock. And you can use the points you accumulate by participating in chat to unlock those quail, sheep guana, unicorn, potu emotes that everyone is shouting back and forth. So that everyone who participates can have the emotes. Also, thanks for joining Twitch and coming into chat instead of lurking silently. Everyone is, of course, welcome to lurk silently if that is the way they prefer to view. But I think I think my chat is great and fun. Although, in fairness, I would think that it is mine. But I think we're pretty great and pretty pretty worth logging in for. Um, and the snail races are adorable. Um, you can use those those seeds the same way um, to uh, to vote multiple times in a poll. So basically, you can pick a snail to support and then just keep keep clicking and trying to give it a head start on the others in the snail race. You can be a snail jockey. Or we could turn that off and everyone can just vote once and we can see if there is a snail preference. A snail, a, a fair, a fair and free snail preference. But to be fair, that's a little bit less fun in terms of snail racing. Also, channel points accumulate rather quickly. So many people who have been chatting for a long time have quite a lot of channel points. Ah, Unicorn Duke is lurking in Queenie Garlic. I'm glad that the streams are great to listen to. 
I credit chat mostly for being interesting, giving me things to talk about, although I will always just default to talking about art, because um, that's a thing I can do. Getting our armor on. Let's do the other pauldron, shall we? Oh yeah, mollusks and monsters. You uh, you you haven't built you haven't built up enough yet. Um, but but you will you will quickly get there. Sometimes a little pop up thing will happen next to it, and if you click on it, it'll give you bonus ones. Um. Basically, the more you the more you log in to chat and interact, the more because <sighs> because no one wants to see that Auntie Shepherd. That's not true. I'm sure there are people who want to see that. Um, But oh yeah, if only we could like give other people channel points. If only we could if only we could spread the channel points around. That would be great. Twitch, are you listening? Are you stalking me? Give us give us a way to share channel points with each other. I feel like that's definitely not a thing that Twitch Twitch is definitely not listening. Twitch has people with thousands of viewers playing Fortnite to deal with. It's just, look, it's just an unnecessary level of, of... Also, um, I would like to point out that you did not just say vultures eating entrails. And don't you dare say in chat what you said. You were very specific. And I was refusing your specific request. Twitch never listens, says Saria. Um, Mollocks and Monsters asks if I have a preferred polymer clay. Um, I do not enjoy working with Fimo. Um, basically, this is my preferred, is uh, the Super Sculpey Medium. It does not come in colors, however. So if you're doing something like uh, like jewelry, um, I still, I prefer Fimo just to actual regular basic Sculpey because I feel like actually regular basic Sculpey is just really fragile when, like, it's, it's very brittle when baked. Um, so yeah, if it's, if it's like colored beads or like small, small colored, uh, small colored things, eh, I don't know, Fimo... Sculpey is easier to work with. Sculpey is softer and easier for me to sculpt. Um, but regular Sculpey is a little bit fragile. Basically at this point if I work with polymer clay it's for sculpture that I'm going to do something else with, either paint or cast. So I usually use the Super Sculpey because it's very, it's very sturdy. A little bit sticky it heals it, it adheres well to itself which makes it a really good medium for small stuff that you're adding to and taking away from and moving around it's firm enough that it's 
okay for really fine detail, but soft enough that you can still get a really smooth finish. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the super sculpey is is basically what I what I use for polymer clay. Mostly at this point, I sculpt in ceramic because art. Um, <laughs> there's an actual explanation for that, um, but it boils down to art. There's something not about the process, but about the finished product for me with ceramic that's a little bit more magical and sort of meaningful and permanent feeling. Even if it's a cast object that's been fired, it still feels special. It doesn't feel mass produced or industrial. Somehow it feels kind of permanent. And magical. Yes, unfortunately, the firing part is the the, the barrier to entry for ceramics. Um, you might look around, although now is not a great time at the moment to look around your uh, community because you're not going to find anything right now. But um, but there may well be a community studio or kiln. that will offer pretty inexpensive firing. It depends on, on your, your neighborhood. I was working at a community studio before there was a pandemic and we weren't allowed to all be in one room at a time anymore. Um. And now I'm actually sharing a kiln with a little private studio. But I just drop stuff off and after a week or two they fire it with their own loads. But yeah, it's been it's been quite the uh, quite the process getting getting a place to fire stuff again. For a long time I just had every surface in my house covered in bone dry sculptures. Which just feels dangerous. It feels so dangerous. It's waiting for something to break. <laughs> uh, Auntie Shepherd. Auntie Shepherd speaks truth. I, uh, f first of all, I just love it when people ask me uh, ask me medium and process questions. I'm a big art nerd. I will tell you about how I make art forever if you give me the option. I'll tell you about my tools. I'll tell you about my medium. I'll tell you about tips and tricks. I'll just, I'll tell you everything, everything about it. Occasionally, like we did, um, we did the armature for this guy live on stream. Um, and we did, I have a large goose sculpture that I, that I forced everyone to watch me experiment with making the sort of the hollow base shape for, with slabs and balloons and newspaper on stream. So sometimes I just indulge myself. I try usually to do that sort of prep work off screen, but sometimes I just, sometimes I make everybody watch. So yes, yeah, so when Auntie Shepherd says that you are making me so happy, both with materials questions and giving me a reason not to discuss, uh, it's not the vultures that I object to, um, but yeah, Auntie Shepherd, for someone for someone who who is advocating vultures and entrails, you're always very upset when I when I have to hollow out my ceramic sculptures. You're always very concerned. Let's see what's happened here.
Oh, I'm almost the monsters. Um, there are sort of two sides to sculpting. Uh, I find largely that you'll get to know the medium and then that's enough for that sort of side of it. Like you have to use a medium for a while to sort of get the feel of it because clay feels different in your hands and reacts differently sort of when you move it around. It requires a different touch depending on the kind of clay. But learning about 3D form is a whole separate bag. Um, thanks, Figment's Mate. I'm glad that you enjoy seeing the whole process. Me too. Um, I, and those are the, like, I love watching YouTube videos of that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, if once once you kind of learn things like 3D composition, kind of some of those basics. All of that information you already have about how to to work with the material will really matter. You'll realize how much you already know, basically. how much you've already learned by using the medium over and over again, learning its, its little weird quirks. And they're, they always have their own quite weird quirks. Oh, Arkrath says, I love seeing it too. I would absolutely vote for more of that sort of thing. Good to know. Um, I'm actually thinking that one of the... Armadillo is still on the table, but also um, I've been watching a lot of videos of extremely talented people making uh, Yang, Yang, Zi, uh, Yang, Yang, Zi, Yang Zi style pots. Uh, I apologize to all, to all speakers of that language for my hilariously bad pronunciation. There are, there are rules to how to pronounce these things, and I always forget them. But I kind of want to try making a tiny, a tiny slab built teapot. The way that they do, which looks hilariously easy when they do it, and I know for a fact is hilariously difficult. So that's another thing that I might try and do on stream, is uh, have you guys watch while I struggle with a teapot. Um, I would tell you to Google them, but the, my pronunciation has not given you any idea of the correct spelling. Um, if you go to a tea store, it's the, um, the earthen, the small, very smooth, very well crafted earthenware teapots, it's, you know, little, real little, like about that big, um, a really smooth, but unglazed finish. Just incredible craftsmanship. Um, they are made in the, the Yangtze region, Yangtze region. Ah, oh, just gonna... Yang, Yangtze. The, the, they're named after the region they're made in. Um, it's known for that particular type of teapot and that particular type of clay. Romania. Hannah asked me to shout a random country for no reason. 
So I've chosen Romania. To make it hard for her, largely. Because I'm a, a terrible boss. <laughs> I'm a terrible, I'm a terrible boss who's making my moderator pick obscure countries. Hello, Ghost Glum. Oh. Mollusk and Monster says being an ESL teacher involves a lot of apologizing for English. Yeah, English is, the rules of English are, are not useful. They're not, they don't make sense. They have too many exceptions. It's really uncalled for. It could be much simpler. But it's not. Because we like to make English weird and complicated. Anyway, really cool teapots uh, made by masters who slab build them entirely. And it's just, they make it look really easy. And I know it's really hard. <laughs> but they only make it look easy because they've done it so many times. English is a trick and I will never fall for it, says Ghost Glow. Alright, snail race is up. I'm gonna open I'm gonna open the snail the last flag is Romania. Nice. I'm gonna open that snail race so I can see it. Uh I will comment commentate. Alright, so far a three way tie between the US. Uh I don't know what black, red, and yellow is. We got Australia, the US, Romania, and what's the Oh, oh, Australia's pulling ahead. No, it's tied with uh, the flag. I don't. Ah, oh, Germany. Haha, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Sorry, Arcraft. Look, if, if the world, if the world would just pick something a little bit more distinctive than three stripes of different colors, that would be great. If everybody could have flags that have, I don't know, pictures on them or something. If we could all be Mexico and have a really great, like, eagle eating a snake. Then I would remember whose flag was whose. All right, uh, oh, Australia is pulling hard ahead. Germany falling behind. This <laughs> is the Artcraft seed repository. Uh, Australia is, Australia is, it's, it's a continent and a country and it's a real place you can actually go to. Angela's Folly says, how can I attend the snail race without a fantastic hat? I don't. You'll you'll just you'll just have to. Oh, Australia! Oh no, Germany's catching up. Germany's catching up to Australia. It can still close the gap. It's fifty nine to 50. oh sixty four to sixty. We're still. Oh, Germany's still just 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 a length behind Australia. Coming to the halfway point now. Australia pulling a more commanding lead as Germany starts to flag. The U.S. is basically out of the race, and uh, Romania, not a great showing. <laughs> um, I, think, I think your mistake was, was assuming that anyone would root for America at this point. <laughs> I think that that was the... Uh, that was the fatal flaw, is that no one actually wants America to win anymore. I mean, I personally want Romania to win for no particular reason. It has one pity vote. Yes, definitely a pity vote. In the meantime, one third of the race down, and we are neck and neck. Australia and Germany. Aust oh, Germany. Germany is pulled slightly ahead. Germany is caught up to Australia. This is a very exciting race, folks. These two snails just refuse to let go. And a surprise comeback from Romania. It's still 
running somehow. It's somewhat behind, but it's got it's got a chance. It's one hundred percent a pity vote. Yeah, the U.S. got one pity vote. Oh no, get to know nature. Too real. <laughs> Too real. The U.S. got coronavirus and is coughing on the sides. Too real. True story. I say from the U.S. <sighs> Coming into the final stretch, we have Australia, then Germany, then Romania. Romania making an amazing comeback, but a commanding lead by Australia currently. Sario 52A has returned just in time to hear the final exciting notes of the snail race, the international snail race where Australia is still winning by a number of lengths, but now Germany and Romania are neck and neck for second place. Climbing. Can Romania catch Germany? Oh, it's so close, but Germany. Germany's been running a strong race. However, Australia has now pulled far into the lead, possibly because Romania is starting to take some of Germany's votes. Oh no, Romania and Germany, neck and neck. Romania pulling slightly ahead and a surprise upset coming far from behind. And it's Australia who takes the first place, followed by a surprise upset of Romania pulling into second. And then Germany in a commanding third. The U.S. no longer even on the racetrack. We don't know what happened to that snail. It seems to have wandered off. Congratulations, Australia. A place that is definitely real that you can definitely visit. <laughs> Germany needed to check on its food. <laughs> Says Arcraft. Oh, no. Peek behind the curtain. Uh, thank you, thank you, chat. I hope that I hope that everyone enjoyed my my race my race commentary there. Next time I'll make up facts about the individual snails. I'll invent I'll invent trainers and everything. We'll have a whole, we'll have a whole, at this rate, we'll have a whole snail, uh, snail cannon. It's made great at world building, bad at plot. That's my life. I'm going to invent a bunch of facts about snail racing for you. You got it on the fly right now. Do you want to know uh, a plot that they could encounter? Nope. I got nothing. No plot. I don't plot. Plot is hard. We'll invent a bunch of characters and then they'll just sit there drinking tea because I don't know what they should be doing. <laughs> Come back from Monday's stream when Sarah will draw a bunch of racing snails. Oh dear. Angela's Folly says, plot involves too much conflict for my nerves. And Auntie Shepard says, the U.S. snail is now escargot. Ghost Gloom says, Australia is vaguely real-ish, which is a ringing endorsement. Arcraft, Arcraft says, same, that's why I make up weird livestock these days. Yeah, it's, uh, plot requires conflict, which means I have to, I have to make someone sad. Or I could just invent a bunch of bird D&D characters. Hannah says, that was more fun than I thought it would be. You got, you see, it, it's all about the commentary, Hannah. It's all about... It's all about making it feel like an event. Get 
some armor. Go in here, let's give the, let's do that skirt bit that's gonna drive me insane because I think I meant for it to be like plates sort of overlapping. Wallace and Monster says they would have concerns about the processing of the U.S. snail, which I think is fair. <laughs> Let's stick to the bird D&D &D characters. And yes, Hannah, the idea of the snail race was genius. It is raining, says Auntie Shepherd. It is not raining here in California, because it won't rain here in California again until until next winter. Because that's the price we pay. For good weather. Kind of likes giving people reasons to use bits and seeds. It's true. Otherwise, they just build up forever. I'm glad we can finally have all of the emotes so that everyone can, can use them for that. Okay, that's kind of a mess, but it'll make sense in a minute. This little, little skirt going on here. Living in Southern California comes with a totally not demonic pact, Angela's Folly says. And Sario lives in a swamp. And it can rain at any given moment and often does. Yeah, that's... Um, one hundred percent humidity is a thing, a real, a real, actual thing. That can happen even without rain, which seems like it should be impossible and un just deeply unfair, but it happens. I get my skirt well attached here. Hey, look, living in the desert can be fun. It's, it's a dry heat. <laughs> Sorry, it says, as I was born here, I have gills that dry out at anything less than 60% humidity. It's true. The humidity is a thing you sort of get used to. Although heat and humidity, eh, a bit much.
Oh no, Hannah. Hannah says, looking up other chat commands, and apparently we can set chat to emote only, which seems like a special kind of hell. Not the fun sort. Yeah, that, mm, no. No, we do need, we need words. Communication requires some words. Embrace your inner newt. Angela's Folly says, as someone who grew up in dry heat, going anywhere human makes me feel like I'm turning it into an amphibian. I, what I, I miss thunderstorms. We don't really get thunderstorms here on coastal California. And I sort of, I miss, I miss the thunder and lightning. It's probably good that we don't get them because Lightning is likely to just set everything on fire. But still. I sort of selfishly, selfishly miss the, uh, the show. Mollus and Monsters says they have a friend in California that keeps telling them that their trees are too small and there's too much sky. I mean, there's parts of California where the trees are pretty small and there's a lot of sky. I must say. Not all of it, obviously, but... But it's not all redwood, some of it's scraggly live oaks and big open skies. Although also hills for the most part, so topography helps. Scraggly live oaks is exactly my speed, says mollusks and monsters. Yeah, exactly. Scraggly, scraggly live oaks. Grass that was green for like 30 seconds before it went back to sort of a golden yellow color. It was green in March and now it's not anymore. Like it's, that was it. It was just March. Just that one, just that one month. where there was green grass. And then it was over. It's true, we did, we got a whole extra month of green this year. Yeah, it rained, it rained really weirdly late this year. Sorry, this is we don't have topography here, everything is flat. I mean, I, I will say I did, I did once drive through Nebraska, like fully horizontally across Nebraska. And I have to say, I don't think there's anything there. I certainly didn't see anything. No trees, no people, no towns. Mollison awesome Monster says they are originally from Florida and they have early summer, midsummer, the very beginning of fall and Christmas. Which is, yeah, that that it's about that's about how I I mean I've been to 
I've been to Florida a number of times in October, and uh, and it's in the 90s. It's, uh, it's not it's not what anyone else would call fall. I mean, let's let's to defend to defend our 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 U.S. snail, just in the smallest amount. I mean, we've got a lot of we got a lot of cool different biomes in our country. It's it's run very poorly, <laughs> but but we do have plains, swamps, rainforests, deserts. Mountains and nice temperate woods. We can spend this long in chat just talking about our about our biomes. So you know, it's it's not much, but it's something. It's a nice bit of land we've got here. Oh, lizards. Oh no, there was a freeze and there were lizards falling out of trees. Oh no, poor lizards. Although yeah, when the temperature dips below freezing in Florida, it is it is in fact a statewide emergency. Same in California, really. There's a freeze in California. We set up shelters and stuff. It's it's an emergency. Yeah, he's getting there. He's 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 starting to oh tiny strip of sunlight there we go he's he's starting to look starting to look quite dashing in his in his helm the details always take forever because there's no way to rush them And sort of block out a shape quickly, but but working out all the little details takes time. Okay, let's see. Where's kind of here and here. Is the split? And then the line for the armor is right above that. That no, it needs to go up a little bit. Up here. Is this functional armor? No idea, but it's on a quail, so I feel it does not matter. Feel that feel that possibly, possibly there's only so much critique that's available to uh, to the armor worn by a quail. Hmm. 
you can say, but it's an anthropomorphic quail, and I can say, only barely. <laughs> Given it improbable wing hands, but otherwise, it's pretty much just a quail in armor. Our craft has finished whatever, whatever meal, whatever, is it a midnight snack at this point, our craft? Or uh, time zones are confusing. I'm not 100% certain what time it is, but I feel like it's a like a late latish dinner. Although I advocate for naming meals based on based on when you got up. So, so if I eat breakfast at two, that's just how it is. Oh, it's going on 2 a.m. in Germany. So yeah, mid midnight snack. We'll call it a midnight snack. Seems... Seems close enough. Or very early breakfast, one of the two. Um, yes, the Hen of Grasses is the patron... The patron... God of the Quailadin. Um, if you want to look later in the uh, in the clips that I've saved from old Twitch streams, that was a weird inflection. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> streams, old old Twitch streams. There's a there's one of of me reading the uh, the prayer to the hen of grasses um, because sometimes when I'm doing bird D&D I, I ask chat to make stuff up and I believe it was Auntie Shepherd that wrote the prayer to the to the hen of grasses I believe I might be miscrediting So, hello, Frymaster. Welcome to the Quailadin sculpting stream. We're working on uh, on adding armor to our figurine. And and have just started talking about lore. Later, mollusks and monsters, thank you for coming by and chatting. Glad you got to unlock some emotes. Hope you will join us in chat again. So getting getting some progress here. Wanted to clean up clean up some edges. Here and there. We've got armor blocked out started up here and working on the skirt to go with the breastplate tidying the bottom of that up 
because then this kind of comes in a couple of levels. There's a bit. I think we can trim some of that back here. Got a little bit, got a little bit too much in the rear. There we go. Tidying up the quail in behind. How the fog is rolling in and the light keeps very slightly changing. I apologize if that's like hilariously obvious on the video. How the heck can a quail look so noble? Frymaster127 asks. Um, it's all it's all in the confidence. It's all it's all in the confidence of the uh, of the pose. Stand, stand with confidence. Hold your sword high. It helps to put on a bunch of armor. Because, you know, armor. gonna do a thing that makes casting basically impossible that I would have to correct if I was going to cast it which is this deep overhang that's right just lifting it lifting it fully away here There's another artifact for you today. If you're gonna cast something, deep lips like this are basically impossible to mold. It's a huge pain. And you should avoid them. You would fill them in and make it just a solid shape if you were gonna mold and cast. More process facts. Too much junk in the trunk, yes. Well, there was some overlap when I got back there, you know. When I was attaching the skirt. Now. Did I do that? Okay, it's it's kind of two layers of plates. So I'm gonna have to, to draw the sort of divides too. But first, just. Get the level in there. Oh, gotta lift it back up. Actually, that's gonna be kind of a pain. Oh well. I'll deal with it as, as I work on it. So I gotta flatten that bit out and then lift it back up. And then square it off without out 
drastically changing the shape. Sorry, chat. I will read you again in a minute. I've reached a fiddly bit. <laughs> Requires me to watch what I'm doing carefully. Yeah, like that. Does the hen of grasses have associated colors? I'm assuming gold, um, because it's associated with wheat. Beyond that, I don't know. Uh, and our craft says, you should visit Hannah's stream sometime. She and Devin are making a lovely game, and we get to yell about the artwork and suggest mechanics. And that is true. And you should all watch Hannah's stream on Wednesdays from five to eight, where she works on either her extremely researched magical history medieval comic or Throw Cat, a game she is making with Devin, her husband. Ooh, green and gold, Sario suggests for the Hen of Grasses, which makes perfect sense. Because obviously gold for wheat, but green is for small growing things. And, uh, and new grass. So that feels appropriate. Um, Auntie Shepherd asks, when does quail even get legs? The very absolute last thing, because the legs are gonna be hilariously easy to squish. And the intention is to have them on the stand and then sculpt the feet onto the stand. I might even just briefly sort of half bake, <laughs> half baked quaaludin, um, half bake the, the body of the quaaludin first. Um, and then do a stand with legs so that I don't risk sort of squishing the quaaludin. Um, you can you can sort of set stuff with a heat gun with Sculpey if you're patient and industrious. Um, so I might I might go that route. And then do sort of an overall final bake when everything's sort of partially set. To help keep things from squishing and falling over. Don't you know? So yeah, for, it's, it's even even later than the uh, than the face. We get the legs. Although we're getting we're getting there. Armor is taking shape. I realize I'm holding it half off camera <laughs> as I try and show you the armor. Oh, I like it. There could be a, there could be different, different colors for different, for different orders within the head of grasses. Temple? Temple? Sure, Temple. Because uh, Angela's Folly recommends an alternative blue and gold. And Sario suggests the priest wear one combo and the paladins wear another, which I think is solid. Solid suggestion. Not just because I like colors. But because I like lore. Inventing inventing lore for these things with, with chat is one of my very favorite things. 
one of the very best parts of streaming, for sure. Ah, Hannah's got some, some, some divergent order names. The Order of the Sheaf, the Order of the Reaping, the Order of the Swaying Hills. Really, really going for the wheat imagery. Crouching weasel hidden quail. Sorry, I don't, that just popped into my head and I had to say it out loud. This is, now you understand why I, why I type and then delete so many Twitter messages. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that was funny for me for that moment. Ooh, how about four orders for the seasons, it says Arcraft. Well the hen the hen of grasses is kind of a a harvest slash fertility sort of hen. The death quail under the winter order. It's true. There are there are there are death quail in. It's been confirmed. The winter order. Ooh, resting earth, because I was thinking fallow fields, but Angela's Folly says the order of resting earth, which I think is much more poetic. I like the order of a resting earth. What do you think, chat? How are you feeling about the order of resting earth for death, for death, Quailadin? It's excellently poetic. Seeing, seeing solid support, solid support in chat. This, this makes it official. The, uh, the death quails in are the order of the resting earth. Order of resting earth. Very nice. Tis done. Now, don't let me forget that. I will. I'll clip it. I'll clip it later and leave a clip of, of a, a lore clip. So that I can refer to it later. I've sort of, sort of squished this pauldron. <laughs> holding, holding it at a weird angle this whole time. I've sort of. I've sort of squished the pauldron. It's okay. We can fix it. And we shall. Good, we've 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 created some some new excellent lore today. Some new Quailadin lore. Which is only fair. Since we are sculpting Coiled in armor, even as we speak. I know everyone wants to see the sort of face and details come alive. I know, that's the fun part. But 
we've got a we've got to do the armor bits first. Got to have a good foundation. Swaying hill sounds like they get to the dance. They get to dance. Oh, a silly pole. What is? What is the silly pole? Quilt and recruitment. Choose your order. All right, two two people are in swaying hills because it sounds like dancing. Then we've got the sheaf and the resting earth. I have concerns about the reaping. Feels a little bit violent. <laughs> but the sheaf, the resting earth, and the swaying hills seem pleasant enough. <laughs> market research. Quail is in market research. Possibly we should replace the reaping with something about sewing. But, because the sheaf and the reaping kind of, yeah, that's what our craft said. Sheaf and reaping both sound like harvest and autumn. Um, we need, we need a spring, well, I guess, because the swaying, the swaying hills are kind of summer, right? They're like the, the warm, the warm months of plenty, as it were. Then, uh, then both the sheaf and the reaping seem to be autumn. I, I advocate, I advocate remembering that, uh, that quail are also hiding in the grass. They're eating, they're eating the seeds, but also hiding in the grass. So that's a thing to consider. <laughs> and this is his pretend so you can join other orders. See, that's fair. Ah, fun fact, wheat is a cool season grass you actually harvest in the summer, says Auntie Shepherd. Unless possibly you're in Northern Europe. Well, some of us are in northern-ish Europe, um, but not me. But I also, there's no cool season here, really, so don't know what to tell you. I feel like there's probably not a lot of wheat grown in California. Have I just drifted off screen? I have. Sorry about that. Turns to read chit. And stopped working directly under the camera. I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but there's actually an interesting challenge to sculpting on camera. Which is that you can't always hold the piece where and how you exactly want to. Because you might end up off screen. So sometimes I'll drift off screen because I've got to do something kind of weird and complicated. But I try. I try to keep it on camera so you can see what I'm doing. Where it's just its own weird challenge. Try to have the camera looking kind of as close as possible to what I'm looking at, so it's easy to see what you get to see. But I can only approximate so much. A giant Mediterranean thistle is all I see, and now I'm oh, art joke is Mediterranean. Aha. California grows a lot of alfalfa, so yeah, that's another cool season crop. 
The Central Valley, the, the Central Valley, the, the Central Valley grows some wheat, says Angela's Folly. Artichoke is Mediterranean and doesn't like heat or cold, says Auntie Shepherd. Then maybe summer is the order of the sheaf and autumn is the turning of the leaves or something. Our craft suggests. Um, I don't, to me, the reaping feels like a violent offshoot. <laughs> like, like the, like the quail who didn't want to follow the rules. And say things about heretics. And everyone just sighs. And tells them to go over there. Just like, fine, fine, whatever. Just talk about it somewhere else yeah there's just so much wheat harvesting imagery that that lends itself to a to a problematic view of the world it turns out separating from the chef Harvesting. Oh no! <laughs> and it says they're actually they're actually the farming order. Everyone just worries about their name. It's actually fine. They just sound scary. It's true, if you don't weep the, re the wheat, no new wheat can grow. It is, it is the essential part of harvesting wheat, it turns out. Got to clear the field for the next planting. They're a peaceful order that old quailed and retire to for nice gardening monastic life. I do not. Uh, sorry, I asked if I have a name for my bird D and D world. I do not have a name for my bird D and D world. And now I'm kind of all I'm kind of all in on Hannah's idea that there's the, 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 the there's this whole the the order of reaping and it's like oh no, that sounds scary and but they're just they're just like nice farmers. They don't understand why everyone's so concerned. They're like, it's just, it's the, it's the end bit of harvesting. I don't, why, why are you looking at me like that? You, you reap wheat. That's, that's how you, what, did something happen? Why, why is everyone looking at me like that? Yeah. <laughs> Bob, the world's name is Bob. Why would the world's name be Bob? That's a weird name for a world. Also, when I have to give things random person names, I use Frank. No real reason. Just like the name Frank. Fun name. It's fun to say. I've drifted off screen again. Sorry. Maybe they're the order that also lay to rest unquiet ghosts so they can move on.
And apparently Frymaster's phone insisted on goats instead of ghosts, so that's that's on brand for 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 stream topics, to be fair. Trimming trimming my armor. So it has nice clean lines. Because your armor should have nice clean lines after all. Being armor and all. All right, now we're gonna learn weed harvesting. Unquiet goats also need to put to rest sometimes. Oh no. But yeah, that does sound more like resting earth. The, uh, the unquiet goats, I mean ghosts. Auntie Shepherd is explaining harvesting to us. It is the first bit of harvest. First you reap and then put into sheaves to finish drying. And then you bring into thresh. Then you winnow it to get rid of the chaff. Then you bag up the grain for storage and take it to the mill or whatever. So, that's how wheat is harvested. Don't forget, we learn things on Friday tea time. It's wholly unpredictable what we're going to learn every time, but we do learn things. Just never know what it will be. Uh, yes, all of this assumes medievalish tech. Obviously, these days we have things like combine harvesters. Quail it and do not. They have swords and plate mail. It turns out. If D and D definitely ish, yeah, that's fair. D and D is very uh, our fantasy land. Don't need no rules, which is for the best if you're making a role playing setting, because you never know what other people are going to want to do in your role playing setting. So, you know, sometimes you want to include all the things, just in case. Where are we, at? we are at 524. I did not take a break, which is why I'm sad that there's no more tea. Hmm. There is not a huge amount of stream left, and yet I wish to make more tea. A dilemma. A dilemma indeed. Oh, I've... No! Dented it. Need to 
deal with this bit. There we go. Tidying. Tidying the armor bits. And then I think when I finish tidying the armor bits, I'll take a very small break to make some more tea. Because I can hear my voice going scratchy. And that's not good. I want to be able to keep talking clearly. Got to be able to still work myself up to uh, to snail race announcer voice. So that's basically on uh, what let's. Oops, 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 oops. It's got his little tiered skirt. All set for for freedom of, of motion for his tail and legs. All right, I'm going to take just the shortest of breaks to put the kettle on. Oops, I've squidged the tail in. That was bound to happen eventually. That's fine. Fixed it. I'll just set you there. Prop you up with the spare clay. Let's get you at the bottom of the screen so that then I can put up put up the break time banner. And you can still see the quilladin. There we go. Perfect. I will be back very soon. Until then, consider lore snail races. Oh no, and the app and the app won't let you spend seeds on snails. The Twitch app is bad. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave you with the phrase: the Twitch app is bad. I'll be back in a few minutes. I will see you then.
Hello. Sounds like while I was gone, there's been some attempts to resolve some tech issues. And Angela Spot has gone to get rice going. Yes. Apparently the Twitch app is bad. Oh, International Snail Race Part 2 has begun. Oh, who do we have? We have Japan, France, Korea, South Korea, and, uh, oh, I know this one. Curses. We did. This race is longer as an experiment. Yeah, so it's it's Japan, France, South Korea, Finland. I knew it was one of the Norse countries. Good. It's my flag ideas. Oh, I have, I have a certain amount of pride in my ability to flag ID. I've done a lot of weird flag-based animation. All right, well, Japan and South Korea haven't even started the race. But, uh... After a commanding lead, Finland is starting to fall. Oh, France. France jumping ahead of Finland. Really pushing hard. Finland, though, holding its place. South Korea has started the race. Japan has not. Still at the starting line. It's apparently distracted. South Korea is, is starting to push, starting to try and make uh, some headway here, coming into the first turn. And Japan has now stopped nibbling a dandelion leaf and also started the race. Now Japan is caught up with South Korea and passed it. Japan, really enthusiastic now that it's finally started the race. Oh, Korea is pulling ahead. In the meantime, Finland and France still commanding lead, with France slightly ahead. A lot of Finland fans in chat today, but France is still slightly ahead. Almost to the first quarter mile, with France and Finland neck and neck, and Japan and South Korea trailing by many lengths, but also struggling to stay neck and neck for second, third, fourth, I'm not sure what place anymore. And Finland pulls ahead as we turn into the second quarter furlong turn. I don't know. Finland is now in the lead as France starts to fall behind and South Korea is starting to catch up. Improbably, South Korea is gaining on France. Necro Buffalo says, I shall support Finland for middle school. Apocalyptica obsessed Necro Buffalo. Support Finland for the death metal. Finland still with a commanding lead. France falling farther and farther behind. And everything's just kind of staying the same. They're running, holding position. Japan is surprisingly still in the race. Trying, trying to catch up. In fact, Japan has caught up, but only with South Korea. France and Finland still far out ahead, with Finland a growing commanding lead. Coming up to the halfway point, Finland is leading by, let's say, three snail lengths. Unclear. Fin Finland still far in the lead. France struggling to maintain its speed and keep up. Japan and South Korea neck and neck at the back of the race. Far, 
far behind France and Finland. Almost at the halfway point, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary individuals. And now, halfway through this race, we have Finland with a slightly narrowing lead as France puts on speed to try and make up the distance. What a race, I say, even though really it's a race now between two snails. Oh, South Korea has pulled slightly ahead of Japan, although it hardly matters since they're so far behind France and Finland that there's really no hope for them to catch up in the second half of this race. But, surprisingly, France has some energy left in its little snail shell, and it is starting to put on the speed. It's catching up. Friends, it's catching up with Finland. It could pass Finland here before we reach the third quarter of this race. Can it hold that speed? Can it maintain that stamina? So far, the answer is yes. It is still gaining on Finland. Now just a single length behind. Pulling closer and closer. It passes Finland. France is in the lead. Coming into the third quarter of this race. France growing its lead as Finland starts to flag. Japan and South Korea are still back at the first turn, just hanging out. Finland falling behind needs, needs some death metal rock opera inspiration. Could someone please scream loudly into a microphone while playing electric guitar? in favor of Finland. Finland needs your support. But it's flagging now. Trying to maintain the distance from France, but France continues to grow its lead. Wait, wait, Finland, Finland got some of its, got some of its death metal. Finland is starting to pick up the pace. It's getting its second wind. Working hard to climb closer and closer to France, but France continues to maintain its pace, growing ever faster as it gets closer and closer to the finish line. Entering the final length, the final stretch of the race, coming into that last turn before the final quarter mile, France remains in the lead. Finland trying to gain, but still flagging Japan and South Korea is still somewhere back in the second turn, just hanging out. And now they're neck and neck, and now Finland passes France again. This is an exciting race. We're to the very last stretch of race, and Finland and France are neck and neck. Antenna and Antenna maintaining their positions. Finland pulling slightly ahead, but France climbing, struggling hard to catch up again. Refusing to fall too far behind. Interestingly, South Korea has made it to the third turn now. It's, uh, Still not going very fast, but it's left Japan far into the dust. But there's no way it's going to catch France and Finland. Finland now at the growing, more commanding lead as it seems to have maintained more of its stamina for this final bit of the race. Possibly we could make these races slightly shorter because I'm struggling to maintain the enthusiasm as we... Uh, we keep racing. <laughs> Finland's lead is growing greater and greater. Could this be the end of France's stamina? Is France flagging? Is this all France had to give? Is this snail, the pride of the French snails, a very proud group of snails, if I may say so, 
out of energy? Is it not going to be able to close the distance between Finland? I was wrong. It does, it has a little bit left in the tank. France picks up. France oozes forward, leaving its glistening slime trail behind it and pulls slightly ahead of Finland, just slightly. France and Finland, neck and neck at the very end of the race. Will this be a photo finish? It's so close. Can Finland do it? Can Finland make up the difference? No, Finland. Oh, Finland in a photo finish loses by a fraction of an antenna. France stands on the podium first place. Finland a close, an agonizingly close second. South Korea third, and Japan does not seem to have finished the race. Finland fans inconsolable today as their national pride snail loses by a mere breadth of a snail antenna. They'll go home tonight and listen to their angry screaming death metal and drink toasts in honor of their very cold snail. It's possible the French snail is so motivated because you know that France does eat their racers. They do not perform maximally well. <laughs> oh no, Devin. Devin followed the channel just to get 300 points just to throw into the race. Oh no, and Arcraft can't even can't even have vodka because he has to go to work soon. He can't he can't can't toast the the sad defeat of Finland. Uh, such a sad loss for the Finnish snail. They may call this they may call this victory into question. You know, there was that that uh that France butter doping scandal. They may demand the French snail be tested. <laughs> French snails have everything on the line. So true. So true. So I think that we can all agree that snail racing with poles is definitely the best thing that anyone has come up with for stream in, in a while. That's, it's uh, just gonna, there we go. Um, <laughs> Andy Shepard lost it at French butter doping scandal. Yeah, it's, uh, these things happen. The, uh, the, the, the Finnish, the Finnish trainers would be within their rights to request a buttered test. So snail racing, best, best innovation so far. Snail racing and emotes, I feel that, but I feel that now that we've got, that we've got Five emotes and snail racing. We're really, we're really using Twitch to its proper potential. Ah, oh, yeah, and the fin Finnish snails do need to be hardy to survive the cold. Um, they're famous for their endurance racing abilities. In fact, um, they're much much lauded for their success in the endurance and multi-day snail racing. Uh, 
Ah, uh, snail race. <laughs> oh, goodness. So good. Yeah, and let me know, everybody, if, if the costs of things seems okay. I tried to set everything. The smallest cost that it will allow me to have is 80. So I tried to set sort of all of the unlock things at sort of 100 for an even number so that it was easy to unlock all of the emotes. Ooh, ooh, Angela's Folly, harsh. Scandal when the fans were caught salting the track after an unsatisfactory race. Oh, man. I'm glad that they were caught before any poor racing snails were. Were harmed. Such brutal revenge. But you know, snail racing hooligans just something really should be done about them. I mean, you know, it's one thing to be a snail racing fan, but but the violence is truly uncalled for. Working on the armor. What what do we move on? Oh, I keep squidging the tail. Poor poor quail tail. Once we do this bit, what? Get the sleeves in there, I think. Well, I say the sleeves. Basically the 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 wing armor gap, as it were. Oh, I see Chad is exhausted from, from all that snail racing excitement. Just sit down and take a breather. Recover. Recover from Finland's, from Finland's disastrous loss. I noticed the French fans in here are being uh, surprisingly quiet, not really celebrating their their uh, their victory. Possibly it's because we accused them of eating their race snails. Possibly they're feeling a little self conscious. Um. Yeah. I mean. Hmm. What what order of quail then would be the one to wear the uh, the shining golden armor and to go out into the world doing paladin things? I mean, not the not the 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 death paladin things. Not the not the uh, not the paladin with the scythe paladin things. Um. But the paladin with the uh, with the flaming sword. Hmm. Possibly, possibly he he's the paladin version of the summer time. Um. Or the or the swaying hills. See the glory of sun in a full field of wheat. Or see the reaping, the golden harvest.
And Angela's follow says the uh, French snail supporters are too busy revising their menu plans. Oh. Too busy revising their menu plans after their their racers unexpected victory. Autumn colors might lend themselves to fire. Yeah, that's 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 true. I think I think the key though is uh is what he's called to do based on which which order he's in because he's clearly he's clearly a a champion he's clearly a a, a heroic hero i mean just just look at that look at that pose he's definitely Definitely the the heroic paladin. Sure of himself in all of his golden armor and regalia. A hero for the ages, as it were. Just this last bit here. Turn that up. Get a nice clean skirt. And let's see where, ah, oh, yep, this bit of sleeve right here is the one that we're missing. Just gotta mm -hmm. I see this is kind of a problem here. I drew it in a way that does not make sense. You know, in the drawing that I made. Where the 3D space didn't matter. So if we push that up a little bit. Then just gonna keep swapping tools. There we go. Just imply that that bit is more. Cauldron. Cauldron that sticks up a little bit more. How will we resolve this shape? No idea. But resolve it we must. Bring this in. Like that. Yep, that's better. Lift it up a little bit because he's shifting it when he raises the wing. There we go. OK. 
kind of like that. You still need to to revise that curve some, but it is better. It is better. Makes slightly more sense. Angle of my light needs to change. Sorry if that was weird. Uh, Angela's Folly, that tool is in fact a dental pick. It is, it is a Sutter Dent. CH1 C0 CAL. Chico, Cal oh, Chico, California. Sutter Dent, Chico, California. It's a number 23 dental pick. Oh, flipped po too. It's leading together a little bit. I like it. Um, yeah, a lot of my sculpting tools are dental tools. This is also a dental tool. Um, this is also a dental tool. They are available at um, antique fairs and things for not too much money. And they make really good sculpting tools. I actually highly recommend them as sculpting tools. They are some of my favorites. The the actual pick, not so much, but this one I use all of the time. In ceramic and polymer clay. This is one of my favorites. It's so well used it does not have identifying information on it anymore. Pair, po two pair two yes the fl the, the flip po two side by side is pretty adorable. Okay, got armor. Time for some other details. Let's. Start a bit on the face. Got a get the right shape of beak. A crowd of po too. Oh no. Oh, I love I love the idea that there's one po two looking at at one with a fan. Now this is where the medium rather than firm clay kind of lets you down, although it's no different really than than uh, than ceramic in that these really fine fiddly bits always going to be really problematic. Really easy to deform. Really hard to to work with. Because even the slightest touch, they're so soft. Before, we're going to wrap up pretty soon. Um, but before we do, I want to just sort of get Get those basic features in so that it feels like a character. At last, like a character instead of instead of a big formless model.
so we want to get just the the little basics in. I'm working on tiny details. Let's, can I actually, yeah, let's, um, let's go real close to the camera here. Oops, too far. Come on, focus. Yeah. I'm gonna hope that this works. Let's try to give us the best lighting. Ah, oh, too intense. There we go. Oh, I need the glasses. I need the glasses for this. I'm gonna put on put on my reading glasses. Okay, I can no longer tell if this is in focus. I look at the screen and everything's out of focus. But hopefully it's giving you a good view. of what I'm working on. Oops. I can barely read it. it looks fine from Angela's wallet, so good. Thank you for checking for me once I put on the uh, the up close glasses. I can still I can still kind of read chat from here, but the screen's all blurry. Cause I have started using just my close up eyes. As you do. these things happen. As you can see, these crazy detailed little sculptures take time. So we are not in fact finished, but we are closer than we were. We've got armor, we've got details. It's a good start. Too much of an angle. This this bit's gonna be a pain, I can tell. Trying to maintain the right. I may just have to add a little bit of clay. Might just have to add some clay. Yep. Just gonna have to ease that out, add a little bit of clay. T 
to make the uh, to make the helm work. But otherwise, it's the wrong angle of forehead for the quail. Can't have that. Okay. Oof. Glasses off. Ah, there we go. That's... Auntie Shepherd expected the camera focus to change when I put my glasses on. Oh, that's perfect. Good night, Auntie Shepherd. Okay, we can pull our focus back again to the mid range. There we go. Drink a little bit more tea. Sorry, I feel like there was. A weirdly loud swallowing sound that time. I have no excuse. Are you gonna be too big? Yes, you are gonna be too big. What about what about you? My cheap trick. Ah, that's a good. So I I like to start with a stamped circle for eyes. It just helps make sure nothing nothing odd happens. There we go. Um, and uh, usually when I'm doing ceramics I have this special pen that I use for it and this, uh, this tiny brass tube. And those two sizes seem to cover um, many many of my needs in terms of scale. Yes, exactly. Use use tools. It is important. He looks a little bit angry. Let's see if we can. Do we want to? Do we want to leave him looking a little bit angry? There's something to be said for it, but nah. Let's let's try and soften it a little bit. Still a little, for whatever reason, still a little bit angry. Let's see. Mm. What tool? There we go. Not angry anymore. Cheered the paladin up. So that's pretty good. Little face. 
armor. Just add a tiny bit of clay. To the top. Of the helm. Just need to make that line a bit more evident. Yes. Much better. And make it clear that there is a helm on, not just weird feathers. Not just weird feathers, but a helmet to protect his little bird skull. I have to do a whole other side. Hooray! But for now, I'll just give you an idea of what tool I used to give you that idea. Ah, this is the tool that I wanted. A little bit stiffer, flat. Give some little feather details here. Now that it feels safe to do so. I may have to do them again later, but for now. Me show you. There we go. Just some little details there. Oops, too far. Ah, if only autofocus worked at all. <laughs> if only autofocus worked at all ever, that would be so much fun. But it doesn't. So here we are. Keep I keep feeling like I'm like I'm softening these as I handle him. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at how look at how much I've squished that. This is the uh and his little tail. Oh, this is the problem. Um, especially this actually, as it gets warmer, it gets softer. So the more I hold it, the more I hold it up and work on it, the more easily it squishes under my hands. I'm going to try and be more careful. We'll see if I succeed. But for now, oh, Hannah, Hannah says uh, she finally got the space dice today, and they are underwhelming. Darn. Yes, such determination. Ah, uh, still, still not the the best light angle here. I'm trying to get a. A good the trick with the shiny clay is to try and show you the details at a, at a good angle that's a little bit better kind of shows off the details uh, I am sorry that your dice are underwhelming Hannah that's a bummer Nobody wants underwhelming dice. You want to be overwhelmed with dice. Just 
just gonna try to find a way to to store to store him standing up for the moment. There we go. Yes, standing quailed in. Overhead view. Angelus follows as dice should come with an appropriate level of whelms, and I, I agree. And I think this is where we're going to wrap up Friday tea time. We've gone a little bit late, but I've got some stuff to do, and I can't take y'all till, till 7 again. Till 7 or later, like we have the last couple of weeks. But I will see you again on Monday. I don't know what we'll do on Monday, but it will be exciting. I say, rashly. Rashly claiming excitement. Just hold that there for you as we do the wrap-up. Try and use my mouse left-handed. I hope that you've enjoyed the stream. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed especially the innovative snail race adventures. They were excellent fun. Made some good Quailadin progress. We've invented some excellent Quailadin lore. And I will try and go back and clip the important bits of it to easy to watch little clips later. Specifically the bit about the resting earth Quailadin. And I will see you on Monday. I hope you have a good weekend. Uh, I don't know what we'll do on Monday. No plans yet. Maybe we'll just go back to this and work on it. Some more. Maybe we'll just try and finish the Quailadin. In the meantime, take care, stay safe, be kind to each other, invent more great quail lore, and I'll see you later. Bye.